Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at an advanced method for passing values between rules. Let's begin by creating two rules. I'm going to right click on my part and select Add Rule, accept the default name, and let's add another rule. OK as well. All right, let's open Rule 0, expand the Run Other branch. Double click on the Run Rule snippet. Here's the argument name, and here's the argument value. Let's rename Rule Name. We'll call it Rule 1 and click OK. Now let's open Rule 1. And let's type A equals, expand the Run Other note, double click on Rule Arguments. Let's delete this part of the code. This function retrieves an argument that's passed via a named value. Now let's bring in the message box function. I'm going to expand the message box node of the tree and double click on the show snippet. Let's replace the message with variable A. Now pay attention to what's going to happen here. Since I didn't run rule 0, argument 1 doesn't exist. Let's click OK. We're going to end up with an error, and here it is. Let's click OK. Let's see how we can fix this. First of all, the error is not in this line, but in this line here. To prove it, let's comment out this line and click OK. Now we have no problem. So we know the problem occurs when A equals nothing. To avoid this error, let's bring in an if statement. And I'll bring this line of code within the statement. The evaluation statement is going to look like this. If A is not equal to an empty string, then this line of code here is going to run. Let's click OK and check it out. Since the variable A doesn't store any value, my message box doesn't appear. Let's run rule 0, right click, run rule, and here's our message box, argument 1 value. Let's click OK, and let's make some more modifications to rule 0. Let's declare the variable here, dim A as integer, And the next line, a equals 5. Now we'll use the add method. Let's copy this line here. And let's paste it below with a control V. We'll call this argument 2. The second argument we'll replace with variable a. So, in a nutshell, the second argument will store the value passed to this argument through variable A. Let's click OK to test it out. And let's modify our second rule now. Let's copy our first line of code. Right click and copy. And let's paste it here. Variable B. Argument 2. Let's modify the evaluation statement. Here we're going to use the AND and then isNothing function. Open and close parentheses and within those type the variable B. Let's add a logical operation note. AND NOT. Open and close parentheses. Let's change the message box message. A space equal sign space, double quotation space ampersand space A space ampersand and then the carriage return live feed constant space ampersand space open quotation B space equal sign space close quotation space ampersand space B. So let's review our logic. If A is not equal to nothing and B, now here it's a little bit more complex. If this function returns a false value, which means variable B holds some value, 
Then the not logical operator will reverse the Boolean value from false to true. So basically, we end up with if A is equal to something and B is equal to something, then this line of code is going to run. Let's click OK and let's see how it works. Right click on rule zero, run rule. Here's our message box. Let's click OK. Let's modify rule one a little bit more. I'll copy the if statement and I'll paste it below with a control V. Let's change the title to message box one. And I'll copy and paste that below. Message box two here. I'll replace this comparison statement here. Copy. And paste it here. So here we're evaluating whether or not argument one has been passed to this rule or not. And is numeric. then variable b within parentheses. What we're doing here is checking if argument one is passed to this rule and if the value stored in variable b is numeric. Now, if both sides of the evaluation statement are true, then this line of code will be executed. Let's test it out. Click OK. Right click on rule zero, run rule. Here's our first message box. Let's click OK. And here's our second message box. Click OK again. This concludes our tutorial about using rule arguments.